Okay. So um, last time we did an introduction uh, to, to sets and uh, Venn diagrams and all those sorts of things. Now we're going to get a little bit fancier and actually do things with these sets. Um, so set operations or how do you add sets. So let's imagine that uh, you're trying to collect all nine game pieces given out by BK and, that, and so you can win a prize. Um, let's just call these set pieces numbers one through nine. Um, and let's say that Yannick gets pieces uh, two, three, five, seven, and eight. And Jasmine gets two, four, five, and seven. So first of all, uh, okay, so Yannick has what? Has five cards, Jasmine has four cards. So if Yannick has five... If Yannick has five cards and Jasmine has four cards and they need nine cards, are they set? Do they have all nine cards? No. Okay. So how many cards do they have? How many cards that they need do they have? Right. So which cards do they have? Two, three, four, five, seven, and eight. Okay. So together, they have six different cards. Um, now, now, obviously, if we're just shuffling the cards around, we write down what they have, it's easy to see that it's six. Um, but there is, where did the six come from in a mathematical sort of way? If Yannick had five and Jasmine had four, how do we add five plus four and get six? Because there are repeats. How many repeats are there? Check it. Three. Two, five, and seven. So there are three repeats. So what do you have to do with the repeats? Count them only once. Exactly. And in order to count them only once, what do you do? After you have the 5 plus the 4, what do you have to do? Minus 3. Because, you've count because if you just do 5 plus 4, you've counted them how many times? You've counted them twice. So there you go. So this is the these are the this is the sort of common sense way of looking at this. Now we're going to put all this in math notation. All right. So first of all, how do we write uh, uh, Yannick's cards? How do we write that in notation? Y bracket, right. Y equals bracket. Da 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 da. And we said that Yannick has five cards. How do we write that in notation? Right. N of Y equals five. Exactly. Um, and then we can do the same thing for Jasmine. So that, that's the notation for the original situation. But then we ask this additional question, uh, together do they have all nine cards necessary? 
what we have to talk about what does together mean uh, in when you're talking about sets. When you say both together, that's called the union. And the notation for this, uh, so the technical definition is the elements in either set. So in this example, it would be uh, a card that's in either hand. Which cards are those? Two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Uh, and what's the notation for that? If you have two sets A and B, you write down the union as A and then U, B. So in this case, uh, Yannick and Jasmine's cards together, what would be the notation for that? What's the notation for putting their cards together? What are the two sets? Y union J. And what is Y union J? All the parts uh, yes, and how do we write that down? First of all, bracket, because we're talking about a set, and then what? Two, and then what? Two, three... Four, five, seven, eight, and then close the bracket. Remember, these are the cards we said uh, everything they had together, which was these six cards. <coughs> okay. Next, we're going to talk about how to draw the picture for this. How do you draw the picture? for Y union J. Right. Yes. So, right. So a couple things were said, they're all correct. So the first thing you have to do is, of course, just draw the basic picture where you've got one circle for Y, one circle for J, and they overlap. And then you have to start drawing in stuff. So the easiest stuff and the, the, the proper stuff to write down first is the stuff in the overlap. So what, go what goes in the overlap? Is... 2, 5, and 7. Uh, if you wait 30 seconds, you're going to find out. Okay. So 2, 5, and 7 go in the overlap, and then what else do we put down? Right. So the other stuff in J, what, what else is in J that we haven't accounted for yet? There's a 4. Yeah. So the 4 also goes in the J, and what else is in Y that we haven't accounted for yet? Is the 3 and the 8. And then a nice way to represent this is you shade the part that you're referring to. So the union is everything in Y, also everything in J, so that's what you shade. I'm sorry? Uh, well, the shading indicates whatever you want it to indicate. <laughs> in this case, we're, we're indicating the union. Right. And notice that to complete the picture, uh, we should really fill in. the universe. Because remember the universe is the integers 1 through 9. So what's left over is 1, 6, 9 and that just goes on the outside. I think that the universe kind of doesn't matter if it's like a U. Just put it thereabouts. You okay. put it inside corner, outside corner, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Label it in a reasonable way. Okay. So does that make sense? All right. Daniela wanted to know, what do you call that overlap part? It's called the intersection. So what 
Sorry? What was that other thing? Between right. both of them. Right. So in this case, right. So the definition is it's the elements that are in both sets. And here's the notation. For sets A and B, the intersection is A upside down U B. And we're just going to say A intersect B. So in this case, what is Y intersect J? And next, we're going to draw the picture. So how do we draw the picture? Well, all the elements are in the same place, because Y and J are still the same sets. But you only shade the overlap part. first one, the union uh, represents uh, both of them together. That's what it means. So if you ask for the union, you shade them both. But if you ask for the intersection, you shade them both. Is that what you shade them both? Uh, it's not really an if-then. It's the, the word is union, and the way you represent that using a picture is like this. Um, you could also represent it in set notation. And in set notation, it would be, you know, well, it depends on what the sets are. Uh, but in this case, it's, uh, what is it, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, every everything that's in both. Okay. Both together. Okay. And then the last bit is everything else which is the complement. We talked about this last time. Uh, and the it's the elements not in a certain set. Um, so, but, but in the universe, exactly. All right. So in this case, for example, uh, Y complement is what set? Everything not in Y. Okay, and what is that? Four, one, six, nine. There you go. I'm just gonna put it in order. And how oh how do you draw the picture for this? Everything counts out shade. <coughs> exactly. You identify Y and you shade everything else. Right. You dig? The next set operation is difference, which represents a difference. Um, so I have to explain a bit about difference. So let's let's try to take a uh, y minus j. Now, how do you take the difference between sets? Well, remember that set y was two, three, five, seven, eight, and set j was two, four, five, seven. If you take the first one and you subtract the second one, what does that give you? Well, it gives you 3, 8. Because what you're doing is, you're saying, we're going to start with Y and take stuff away. What gets taken away? Right, so element by element, what gets taken away? Okay. 
Now, y has a 2 and a 5 and a 7, but what do you do with the 4? Well, what we, all we do is we say we ignore it. Because if you don't have a 4 to begin with, when it comes to sets, you can't take it away. Notice that we don't notice that we're starting with the set Y. There's no four in there. So how can you quote unquote take away something from a set that didn't have it to begin with? So but if you did J minus Y, it would be four. Yes. You have a three and eight exactly. So right. It's like it's like if someone and uh, said take away his yacht. Said said that to me. I was like, well, I don't have a yacht, so okay. <laughs> can't take away something you don't have. And that and that's how it is with sets. And you wouldn't give it to the other Uh Yeah, there is there's yeah. No giving, no taking, but there's nothing to do with it. So the result, uh, actually here's a little fancy explanation of where you can get the number of elements from. I'm going to skip that. I want to, uh, you can look at that at your leisure. I want to go directly to the picture. So how do we draw the picture for y minus j? And by picture I mean Venn diagram. Yes, awesome. It's this part. Can you explain? Okay. So, okay, so it sounds like you got the answer just by looking at what the elements are and then figuring out which part of the picture it should be. Um, so that's fine. But now let's imagine that we don't have the elements to look at. Just from looking at the picture by itself, can you explain why you should shade in that part? Mm -hmm. Think about what does it mean because to start with y? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Because that's the two elements. Because y has three and eight. So uh, you're looking at the elements again. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so if you're taking away from y, everything that you left over, is it really combined with uh, so wait, so you're saying the answer is Y shaded in completely? Like, only Y, but not the union or J. Okay. So you're partly right, but you're getting some, I think you're getting some of your terminology mixed up. Okay. So remember, what are we starting with? We're starting with Y. If I just said Y, we'd shade in Y. But what are we then doing? Taking away anything that J has, which is going to be what part of this picture? The intersection part. So we want to get rid of that. And then what's left? That, that crescent part. Starting with Y, taking away anything that's in J. And that's what it gives us. Um, so notice that this one is sort of all this one in a sense it's helpful to think of it in two steps union inter I mean honestly the union is kind of two steps but it's so easy it's almost one step really the union says take Y shade that in also take J and shade that in but it's so clear we can basically do it in one step this one is helpful to think of it in two steps and some of these harder problems this is how you're going to want to approach them so start with Y because that's what the problem says. You're starting with, if you just literally read it from left to right, start with Y. 
And then what do you do? Quite literally, you take away J. So if you start with Y and take away J, in terms of shading, what's left? the crescent part of Y with the J sort of bitten out. Oh, okay. So only Y is going to be in the J today. Everything that's in Y... With except the crescent. Um, except right. The except the J parts. Mm -hmm. Uh... Well, that this one, the first one was sort of my scratch work, going through it step by step. Uh, think of like the second one is like the tidy final answer. Um, and when you do these problems, particularly the complicated ones, you will often find that it'll be helpful to have one picture that's your scratch work, where you're shading and erasing, uh, and then one final one that's clear, which represents your final answer. So. And of course, I'm not, I'm not saying you have to do it that way. I'm just saying uh, you might find it helpful. Okay, uh, so I want you guys to work on these two. Draw the diagram and find the elements. The first one is uh, Y complement union J, and the other one is Y intersect J complement. Uh, both draw the diagram and then also find the elements. I suggest you do the diagram first, but you can do it either way. Oh, which is which? Right, right, sure. Uh, okay. Oh, there you can actually see it. There's Y and there's... J. If you look in the top problem, you can see Y and J right there. Okay, so let's talk about these questions. So, for the first one, uh, Y complement union J, how do we do this? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. 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 So, okay. So, so, so what am I writing down? Okay. So, what is Y prime? Okay. Is that the answer? Okay, so so two sorry, two, three No no, no I don't want to know the answer. I want to know the first step. Okay, draw the square in the circles. Okay. One thing to do would be to, to draw this thing. Okay. Okay. No, because look, there there's more than one way to approach this problem. So uh, actually, I think I actually think you were going on a different track. Uh, so I just I want to hear how you do it. Okay. So now what? Okay. So you, okay. So you didn't use the diagram. So we'll we'll come back to we'll come back to the diagram. So the first thing you wrote down was what? 
Okay. So y prime is what? What is y prime? If you got it, what is it? Three and eight is y prime. That can't be it. <coughs> yeah, why is two, three, five, seven, eight? So could this be y prime? I don't think so. Okay. So how can we? Okay. So how can we continue to? How can we continue to go after this problem? You draw the two circles, okay. and then you put in the numbers. Right. Y and J. Okay. Y is on three and eight. So, uh, I didn't. Eh, okay. Okay. And now what? I'm assuming what? Am I assuming that? No. Yeah. Where do we get the 1, 6, and 9 from? Those are the missing numbers. Remember the original problem? Okay. 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 <coughs> okay. So y prime one four six nine. We actually already figured that out about a couple minutes ago. Okay. So what do you do with a union? Okay. Because y is union is everything together. So do we include? Is one included? Yeah. Is two included? No. If you take both the sets and mush them together, does that include two? Okay. So, so even though 2 is in y? Yeah, because, because 2, 5, and 7 is a complement of y. All we're looking at are y complement and j and putting them together. That's what we're doing in this problem. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, and zero thingy. And what element is missing? I heard someone say it. There's no empty set here. What are the elements in Y and Y complement? One four six nine. Have those all been included? Six. Oh, we forgot one. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's good and fine and all, but let's figure out how to draw this on the diagram. How do we draw this on the diagram? Mm -hmm. 
Outside of what? No. What's the first thing that you shade? Read the que What is the question asking for? So what's the first thing that you shade? What's the first thing the problem is asking for? Y prime. So what's the first thing that you shade? Y prime. Yes. Y prime is the notation. So the first thing that you shade is Y prime. Where is Y prime? What does Y complement mean? Everything outside, of y. Everything outside of Y. So where do we shade? Everything outside of Y. Everything outside of Y. I said that. You said the universe and then it's J and then... Well, the universe is everything outside of No, it's not. What is the universe? Everything. The universe is everything. So it's this is not a technicality. This is being very this is being precise, and that's what a lot of this class is, is learning to do. The universe is everything. What we want to shade is y complement. That's everything outside y. So where do you shade? Outside y. That's it. It's actually simple. So there's y. We shade outside of it. Okay. What else do we shade? Now we shade J. So here's how I'm going to do it. I, I, have, I have different colors at my disposal. You probably do not. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in a way that you could do if you only had uh, one color handy. Let's also shade J. Now what's the final answer? The union. So what does the union mean? Everything together. So the final answer is what? Everything together that's been shaded. So what does the final answer look like? Well, everything that's been shaded. Shaded this way, shaded that way, crosshatch, whatever. So the final answer looks like that. Because it's everything that has been shaded. It's everything together. Next, how do we do the next one, which is y intersect j complement? Okay. okay. So y is two, three, five, seven, eight. Okay. Okay. Three and eight. Does that look familiar? Mm -hmm. That's a y minus j thing. Yeah. It turns out this is the same as y minus j. Pretty sneaky, huh? Now, 
Let's draw the picture. How do we draw the picture? What do you do? First, shade Y. Next, mm, shading the universe won't be very helpful. Exactly. The second, the second object, the second set, is J complement, which is everything outside of J. So there's J. Let's shade everything outside of it. Now, what's the final answer? Only where there's two of Exactly. Just the part of Y that isn't in the Right, because remember what this question was about. This question was about the intersection. So intersection is the overlap. So where is the overlap? Well, it's not. It's not in the. It's not in the middle per se, but it's not in the middle of the picture. Here's the overlap. So, in art, we call that cross hatching when you shade going in both directions. So it's the cross hatch part. Uh, I didn't fill in the elements if you're talking about okay. that, so uh, one is not in there. So wouldn't that show that you're including the whole universe? That you're including what? I'm including the whole universe. Uh, no. Because remember what we're talking about. We're talking about the intersection. So the final answer is just this. I don't know, do you? I'm not sure. Apparently it doesn't look so. <laughs> Remember, this question is about an intersection. And what is an intersection? Overlap. It's the overlap. It's what uh, elements or what part are in both sets. So how can you see on the scratch work picture what's in both sets? It's one where you shaded this way and shaded that way. Well, which part of the picture is that? Oh, the the Y. Right. That's how the shading you can use the shading to tell you what's in both sets. Remember, you shaded diagonally one way for the Y, shaded diagonally the other way for the J complement. So, what's in both? Well, whichever you shaded both. And that's it. So now, uh, I want to wean you off of using elements. So this was uh, Dustin, right? This was Dustin's question before, what do you do with the elements? Now we're going to talk about just sets in the abstract, all diagram, no elements. So let's draw the di Venn diagram for A complement, union B complement. So how do we do that? So here's A and B. What's the first thing that we shade? Right. So first we're going to shade everything outside A. Okay. Next, everything outside B. And what is the final answer? Nope. The overlap. Um, the little. Where the two of them meet. 
Nope. What is a union? So what does the final answer look like? Everything outside the two circles? No, everything that's contained in the two overlap is the union asking for the overlap? No. No. Everything that, that's shaded oh. is the answer. Yes. Yeah. Anything that's shaded, because it's only got to get, remember, it's the union, so it's everything together. It's only got to get shaded once, and that's all we need. Shading means it's in one of the sets. That's all the union is asking for. Is it in any of the sets? So it's everything that's shaded at all. So the final answer is that. Um, so let me just make a comment. Once you get really good at this, you may be able to just uh, draw the final answer without doing scratch work. Um, but as you're figuring it out, it's probably going to be helpful to have one diagram where you're doing scratch work and then another for your final answer. I think you're starting to see that. Okay. All right, so why don't you guys uh, try the last one? Or try the next one, I should say. B complement minus A. So how can we approach this problem? Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this picture. Okay, so shade in B prime, which is everything outside B. Okay, and then what do we do with this? You're going to shade in A? Okay, so you, okay, you've got different shadings on that picture, so I'm not sure what the final answer is. The blank part? Okay. What does minus mean? It means take no away. Way. So if I've got a pen in my hand, what can I, how, how can I take it away? You shade A. Because you're trying to take away... That's actually... Uh, sorry, what was your name? John. Okay, that's actually really clever. Um, you've actually translated this into an equivalent problem, which is uh, extra fancy. Um, so you're correct, but I'm going to come back to your correct solution. Um, well, I'll come back to it in a second. First, I want to talk about this in the straight, more straightforward way, then I'll talk about his fancy way. So if I'm trying to take away something and I've got a pen in my hand, what can I do? What does take away, sorry, <laughs> what does take away mean? Subtract. Subtract. And if I have a pen or pencil in my hand, how can I subtract something? I do what? You cross out. You erase. Erase. Yes. So I'm going to erase A. I just I just took it away. I erased it. Uh I erased some of the lines. Obviously, I should put those lines back in. Um, is that? I thought that's what you were saying. What's your question? No, 
I just took A and got rid of anything that was in A. Oh. Probably. There we go. Okay. I meant I meant only to erase the shading, but my eraser is not that clever. <laughs> so remember that originally there originally there was shading here. <laughs> but I said, no no no, we're gonna erase we want to take away A, so let's erase A. Let's let's get rid of any stuff that's in A. So boom boom boom. And that's your final answer. Right. Minus is tough if you're using a pen. <laughs> yes, it really is. All right. So does everyone get this one? Yes, no? Uh, okay. Does anybody have an alternate explanation? Uh, I know I could say it more slowly and more loudly. I don't know if that will be helpful. Does anybody have a, a different way of explaining it for other than what I've said? Yeah. So he said it's he said it's everything outside B but you don't want to include the A stuff because it says minus A. So all this that's awful. Uh <laughs> here. All this stuff is in A, but we're subtracting A, so you get rid of it. You don't shade it. You get rid of it. However you like. Right. Right. So in theory, you could do you could you could do this when you know once you get clever, you could do this all in one step. You could say I'm going to shade B prime, but I'm not going to shade the A stuff since I know I'm going to subtract A. It's a sort of all in one step approach. Okay. <coughs> now I want to get back to was it Jonathan? I want to get back to what Jonathan said. Sorry? Uh, Jay? Okay. So I want to get back to what Jay said because it was tremendously clever. Um, if you go, so the last thing that Daniela said was useful. She said, we know we're going to shade everything in B complement, but since we're subtracting A, don't shade the stuff in A since we don't want that. Jonathan, uh, Jay took that one step further. He said, knowing that I don't want the stuff in A is the same as saying I want the stuff that's in what? If you don't want A, that's the same as what? Absolutely not. <laughs> What's the same as not wanting the stuff in A? A complement. Um, it, well, what it, like let's if see. If you're doing something like this, wouldn't it be a complement? Right, so what it is, let's, lo let's look at what the original picture would be. Uh, let's look at what the picture would be for, I need some scratch work here. Uh, we'll get to this in this. This is another comment which I'm going to make in a minute. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, 
okay. and here's A, here's B. So what J said was, we're going to start with B complement, but if I'm getting rid of A, that's the same as saying I only want the stuff that's in A complement. So if you only want the stuff that's also in A complement, what is that the same as saying? That's the same as saying A complement and take the intersection. Because if you only want the stuff that is also in A complement, that means you only want the stuff that's in B complement, but also in A complement. So if we're talking about stuff that's in two sets, has to be in both sets, it's in the overlap. And the overlap is an intersection. Like I said, his way is the fancy way. I just uh, The direct way is to say I'm doing minus, so it's just an erase. But he's exactly correct. You can interpret it this way as well, and it's quite and it's quite uh, sensible. So notice that if you notice that if you do a co uh, a complement, a complement gives you this, and what you're looking for is the intersection. And where is the intersection? It's all the crosshatch stuff, which is everything uh, that's on the that's on the on the perimeter, which is exactly as we saw the correct answer. Okay, so Jay, I think you brought up something fancy that uh, not everyone was ready for, um, but it was a really good point. Sorry? <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay. I'll leave that one alone. I got one more question. <laughs> uh, actually, that's not what I mean. Now let's go the other way. Here is the picture. What is the notation for this? So while you guys are busy drawing, Nafisa was busy thinking, <laughs> and she's already got it. So how did you, how, Nafisa, how did you figure out what the answer was? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, okay. So Nafisa said B minus A, and she's exactly right. So what shaded in basically looks like what? It basically looks like B, but what's the difference? Right. The little overlap part is not shaded in. So the thing is, you want B, but you want to get rid of that part. How can you get rid of it? Get rid of A. That's it. So if you start with B and get rid of A, this is left. So this is B minus A. You dig? Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I question? Okay. So it would be great if you understood all of this uh, immediately instantaneously. I don't expect that and neither should you. Um, and that's what homework is for. Um, so I'll just make that comment. So what if the intersection 
if so wait we have a question so what if uh, what if what the part in the middle. So what if it was like this? Yeah. Okay, then what's that? A intersection B. You just said it. You, you said what if the intersection is shaded in? <laughs> <laughs> That's A intersect B. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yeah. This is A intersect B. It's not the union. Because if you look at the picture, we shaded in B prime and we shaded in A prime. Do we want the union? Does taking the union give us the same picture? No. The union is almost everything shaded in. That's not what we want. What we want, I mean, again, I'm not going to rehash the entire explanation. Again, like I said, it's a little bit fancy. Uh, what you actually want is everything that can be complement it is also an A complement. And if it's got to be both, it's got to be in B complement and also an A complement, that's not the union. What is that? That's the intersection. But again, that's kind of translating one expression into another expression is kind of fancy. Uh, we're not going to really uh, get very deeply into that. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have a little bit of time left, so I want to I do want to show you something a little bit fancy. A Venn diagram with three sets. Now, first of all, how do you how do you, where do you put where do you put the third set? Here's A and here's B. Okay. Where I left space for it, right? Okay. <laughs> And naturally, we're going to call that C. Okay. So, let's now play this game. Let's draw and shade the Venn diagram for A union B union C. Uh, that's the right answer to a different question. Exactly. Right. This is relatively straightforward. Because if you have A, B, and C, what do you want to shade? Right. You want to shade A, you want to shade B, and you want to shade C, and what do you include? No, because what is this question asking for? The union. So what so what do we include in our final answer? Everything that everything that we shaded, which is everything inside the the total perimeter of A, B, and C. Okay. So does that make sense? Okay. This is a relatively straightforward one. Uh, that was A. So you are shading the intersection. Sorry. You are just everything that's inside the circle. That's in any of the circles. Yeah. Right. So that's including the intersection. It includes the intersection, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Next. A intersect B intersect C. This is a little trickier. Right. So there's a long way to figure this out, and there's a short way to figure this out. And I think, uh, sorry, what was your name? Stephanie. I think Stephanie did it the short way. She said, basically she said, what do I know about uh, two sets? I know if you have two sets and it's the intersection, it's where they overlap. Well, here we've got three sets. Everything's being intersected, so what am I looking for? The overlap, the overlap of all three. And where's the overlap of all three? That little piece right there. So if you're clever about it, this, is, this one is relatively straightforward, so if you're clever about it, you can just do this in one step.
Is, is that basically what you did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So good. <laughs> Absolutely. Which is why, for the last problem, I have this hard one. This is A union B in parentheses intersects C. Intersects C prime, excuse me, C complement. So what is, I think the first step here is relatively obvious. What's the first thing that we should do? A union B. So shading A union B is what? Looks like the goggles, right? Okay, so we know the first step is going to be this. Now what? We got a shade C prime. Right. Everything outside of C. Okay, so now we will shade C prime, which is everything outside of C. Now, what is the final answer? Where they, overlap. Where they overlap because we're taking the intersection of the first thing and the second thing. So the final answer looks like what? Let's see. We've got it here. And where else? <laughs> and this part. And this part. Okay. So that winds up being the final answer. No, because what if we started with A union B? <laughs> right. So, right, so, uh, so Jay's version of translating the problem can actually be quite helpful because if you just think of A union B as one thing, you're intersecting it with C prime. And what is that the same as saying? That's the same as saying uh, we also want it to be in C prime. What is C prime? C prime is everything not in C. So another way to think of this is we want it to be in A and B together, but not, but not in C. In C. So that's, that's another, w that's a different way of thinking about how to arrange this. Okay. So it sounds like some of you guys are actually starting to get the hang of how to think about these problems. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, all right, that's it.